the robots are coming. The robots are coming uh, to if by C. Hey, I don't know. Uh, uh, there's this uh, th- trend coming up. Robots are uh, capable of doing a variety of things. For example, they can uh, vacuum your floor, but in the future, maybe they can vacuum your ceiling. They've got a lot of utility ahead. Uh, Joining me to discuss it is my good friend, Randy Kirk. The crazy man himself is back for another round of what I can only imagine is abuse. But, you know, who am I to shame? So, uh, Randy, thank you for joining me. Yeah, you bet. I saw one the other day that they had shaving somebody with an electric shaver. Oh, electric. Okay. By the way, I forgot to... I did forget to mention that uh, I'm Brian. Welcome to My Tesla Weekend. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, better late than never. Uh, that is similar to the one I saw. Uh, the headline said, Robot Roasts a Perfect Cup of Coffee. And yeah. I was like, wow. So I watch it. He popped a K cup in. You just made a more complicated Rube Goldberg style vending machine. But hey, it's a proof of concept. The idea isn't that it can make a cup of coffee. That's not new for machines. It's that it can learn to make the cup of coffee using the mechanism that humans use. And if it, if it can do that, it it presumably can do other things. So I saw this great article by IEEE discussing many of the new bots out. And once again, this is one of those situations where DARPA created a program to advance a project and years later it's starting to get into the market which is the same thing we saw with autonomous vehicles right. the, that was the a classic darpa challenge and if you remember the early years it was great i think the first year they ran the challenge no vehicles completed the course yeah, yeah, and then the next and then the next year one or two did at, at but it took them like six hours and then the next year almost all of them finished in like 40 minutes yeah yeah and that's <laughs> and this is the beginning basically of the whole concept of autonomy in 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 vehicles and uh yeah and the the darpa challenges with regard to robots have been equally as interesting plus we've had all the you know 20 years or so of the robots uh, beating each other up in uh, in um, in oh yeah <laughs> battle bots battle. in the arena yes yes and the early days of battle bots it was pretty boring yeah and now it is uh, dangerous, scary. Sometimes my concern is always, if you've got one company that is basically doing all the work, the entire likelihood of completion hinges on that one company continuing to push forward. And we've seen that with autonomous vehicles in the 1980s and 1990s, where I think BMW or Mercedes or someone like that said, we're ready. Technology is here. We're going to do it. And then a year or two later, they just canceled the program and that was it. It's done. No one else is working on it. With bots, how many companies would you estimate are working on humanoid robots at this time? I think there are so many that we don't know about, but I would say that we know about, uh, I would say on the order of nine or 10 that are clear. Mm -hmm. But likely dozens and dozens. Oh, and, and I would say then there would be 50, 100, 200 labs, Um, you know, Lex Friedman. I mean, that's what Lex Friedman, the famous podcaster, that's what he does when he's not podcasting is he's a rope. He does robots in MIT labs and he's been doing them for years Mm. and years. years. So there's a lot of lab work going on that, uh, that is, I mean, we, you know, we, it's been what, 15 years, I would say, since they did the first remote heart surgery um, in a, mm-hmm. where somebody was doing the surgery uh, like you would do with a drone now. They were in in their office and the heart surgery was being done on a, you know, field in, you know, uh, uh, 10,000 miles away. So yes. robot capabilities have been here for a while. Yeah. 10 feet, 10 miles, doesn't matter. It's the same equipment. Yeah. Uh, it's just done remotely. When you look at these bots, one big question, and we'll get into some of the bots here in a second. One of the big questions is why humanoid? Why did, why would you even want it to be that shape? What's the answer to that? Well, so as a factory owner, 
that was the most obvious thing to me when the thing first came out. For a lot of people, they're talking about it'll fold my clothes or do my dishes. I was way more interested in whether it could do functions, take take over the functions of humans in my factory. Because typically what you have when you're automating a factory is you're buying a piece of equipment that's going to be stationary and it has one application. And you might be spending $100,000, $200,000 for that piece of equipment to do a task and it may be replacing one or more individuals in doing that and doing them faster and more effectively. But you basically, if you change what you're doing with that piece of, with that product, now all of a sudden you have to change the automation. You may have to throw out the automation um, and you have expenses associated with making those changes. With the Optimus bot or with any kind of a humanoid bot that we're talking about, this bot will be capable of... Uh, folding your clothes, giving you a great back rub. That's the one I'm waiting for. Um, uh, doing your, maybe maybe flipping your hamburgers and making bicycle water bottles <laughs> or printing bicycle water bottles or, or uh, you know, putting a fender on a car. I mean, it's-, uh, it's So why way. do they, why, why legs instead of wheels? Legs instead of wheels because you want that kind of- uh, uh, special mobility. Wheels are always going to limit your mobility. Um, they're not going to, your ability to do it uh, gracefully is going to be much different. Otherwise, God would have put wheels on humans. <laughs> uh, wheels don't work well on stairs. Uh, wheels can give you unintended uh, acceleration on ramps. Their legs are not the most efficient, but they are the most versatile. And a lot of that comes down to, and, and we've discussed this, when when will the first factory be, will Giga Mexico be designed around the Optimus? The answer is all factories are already designed for the Optimus, for any humanoid bot to function. If a human can function, the bot can function. Within that lineup, there are some subtle differences that are less critical. So I'm looking at some of the bots here. Digit by Agility Robotics. It appears to have legs that are uh, like goat legs, where they bend a different direction. That's fine. That's an easy case to understand. There's no need to have knees in the same place necessarily, uh, unless you need it to be able to drive a car. But there is uh, possibilities that the other robots will call him names. <laughs> but there is no possibility those robots will hurt his feelings. Oh, um, but even having the knees bend in the correct direction does limit what it can do. It can't valet your car if its legs bend the wrong direction. Yes, there yes. needs to be there needs to be an ability to to do that. Looking at these companies, would it surprise you if ten of them have a viable product on the market by 2030? Oh, I, I, I'd be shocked if it was 10. I'd be shocked if it, because you, I mean, your, your opening gambit was correct. This is not hard and it's not going to be that hard to reverse engineer. The hard part is really going to be in, in the, in the software and in the training mechanisms and the methods. And of course, like with everything is okay. I can reverse engineer it, but can I make it as inexpensively as my competitor can now? During that first 10 years, I don't think it's going to matter because the TAM, the total addressable market for these bots, according to Elon Musk, is either 7 billion or maybe 14 billion. Uh, he believes there could be as many as two bots per person between the bots that will be making things, delivering things, you know, managing things, et cetera, uh, and the bots that will be in your home. You might have one in your home and one that replaces you in the work in the workforce. So but let's just call it half half of the of the lower number. Let's say you only need three billion. It will take. I don't care how fast they make these things. It will take a couple of decades to get to that three billion number. That addressable market is quasi infinite, at least through twenty thirty to twenty forty, really. But certainly over the next ten years, if you can build one and right. it works and it's within you know, 50 to a hundred percent of the cost of the next closest competitor, right. it's still going, there will be companies that will buy yours because they want the, the Apollo or they want the, you know, the, any of the other ones that they've got out that are looking similarly quite promising. And they do have, especially early on, 
they will have different use cases. Something like the H1, the Unitree ro Robotics one is lighter. Uh, it's presumably more nimble um, and it's very cheap. That will have benefits. Right. It may, it may not have all the applications of the others. And I notice a number of the companies are still struggling with hands, but hands are, as any artist will tell you, uh, tricky. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you've ever tried to draw one, but they're very difficult. But I went, but I went to an ink um, trade show. I know you're at CES right now. And ink had a trade show uh, in, in Los Angeles. I got to think this was, my kids were teenagers so we're talking about 15, 20 years ago, I went to this ink show and they were showing robotic hands. Who were the robotic hands for? They were for folks that had lost their hand. And so these were replacement wow. hands uh, that were that were quite dexterous and quite capable. Um, and that was a very, very long time ago. So as much as I agree with you, the hands are probably the most difficult thing that has to be overcome other than the brain. Uh, I think the hands are... We're seeing some darn good hands on Optimus and some of these other bots as well. Figure has, a, has shown some pretty good hands. They're all quite exciting and a lot of them in different ways. And unlike a lot of moonshot projects before, these don't cost trillions to develop. These are going to be cheaper and more effective programs than vehicular autonomy. The margin for safety is much, much wider on these. And I think there's room for a number of winners. This is going to, I think what we're going to see is this is going to look like the early 1900s where there were a hundred car companies and all of them were making money. Over time, it will narrow. Surely there'll be consolidation. There'll be bankruptcies. There'll be buyouts and all that. But when the market is wide open as it is right now, because in case you hadn't noticed, there are none of these on the market yet. Yes. Um, in case you hadn't noticed. These are going to be, there are times when you, when something is so new and so radical that you'll never forget where you were when you saw it. And these are going to be that. If it's, if Optimus is an employee at service centers, factory work, I'm very skeptical that they'll let him on the assembly line until he's definitely as fast as the slowest human and probably faster than that because there's a margin of error. And in and the, and the assembly line, we can not slow down. But at the service centers, having them out there polishing the fingerprints off cars, getting you a cup of water when you need one. Do you have any questions I could answer? <laughs> that, will be, that will be a spectacle of such magnitude that the lines we saw to see Cybertruck will look anemic in comparison. Yeah, let me just let me just give you a little clap back on the on the idea in the factory. It's not always an assembly line, and it's not always about the speed of the employee. Um, basically, if the employee is twice as fast as the bot can possibly go right now, I'll buy two bots. Or I'll right, but there's but you don't have space for two bots on the line. Well, space saying, is still a factor. Yeah, if he's not fast enough, if I say go grab me a nine millimeter a socket, right. and I can't. If it takes a human two minutes and a bot five minutes, having two bots is not going to help me. It's right. still going to take five minutes. So that that's what I'm worried about is because the pace on an assembly line is critical. And if the entire line slows down by even a minute a day because of these bots not working perfectly, uh, it's going to be a deal breaker. Now, there are, things, there are things you can do in a factory that are not uh, output critical. Uh, I just need you to move this box of of parts. I need you to move, roll this bin over to station 26. That can be done without with a wide margin for time of arrival. And sometimes but, the machines and sometimes the machines are the are the slowest component. The human can work way faster than the machine can, and so the the human is just sitting in front of the machine waiting for the next component before they then do sure. their operation. So there's lots of places. I, I, again, I could use a slow robot in my old factory in at least 30% of the applications that I had. A fitness coach as a bot would be a fantastic one because he's not going to judge you. He <laughs> can make you jog. He can give you the correct form for your yoga or your weightlifting or, or whatever it is you're doing. Apparently they could be dance uh, instructors too. We've seen them, you know, they can really boogie. 
<laughs> uh, all they need is infinite QR codes on every surface in the world. All you need to do, Randy, is tattoo a QR code to your forehead. Get it right. If you goof it, it's going to be a problem. So, uh, guys, in the comments, what do we miss? What do we misunderstand? How soon do you think bots will act you that you will personally see a bot doing a useful task in the real world? What year? When will it, will that be this year? Will it be before 2023? Will it be never? So uh, for everybody else, you know, check out Randy if you get a chance. But for you guys, like, subscribe, do the usual things and stay tuned. Stay juicy. And I can't wait to hear from you. Haha, clever robots on the flippity flop.